Welcome to, oh, hold on, I think it's still opening up, so I'm good. Okay, let me know when you want to start the YouTube and I'll start the speech. Okay, thanks. My, Michael, I've just gone live, so you can start the speech whenever you're ready. Okay. <coughs> okay, good morning. Due to COVID-19, Committee of Adjustment public hearings have been conducted virtually by electronic means through WebEx web webinar, an online digital platform and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. Participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentations to the committee using WebEx webinar, which is moderated by city staff. Anyone wishing to view the hearing may watch on YouTube. Participants who have registered in advance will be connecting with their computer, tablet, smartphone, or telephone, and have the option of participating via video or audio only. All participants will automatically be muted on entry. When your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator one person at a time. We ask that you also mute your devices until you are called on to speak. Those participants, but those participating by video appearance will be temporarily upgraded to panelist when your item is being held. During this time, your camera will be enabled. You will only be visible during your five minutes allotted speaking time. At all other times, your video will be disabled and you will be reinstated as an attendee. Committee of Adjustment staff will share presentations submitted in accordance with the written submissions deadline. Members of the public and applicants are not permitted to use share screen or any other panelist controls during a video appearance. The host will remove you from the panelist role if you fail to respect this instruction. Land acknowledgement. <clears throat> we acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee and the Wendat peoples and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto was covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto is called to order. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning bylaws that apply to the property, permissions to extend or alter lawful non-conforming uses, and consents to sever properties to create new lots. Anyone in attendance today who wants to receive a copy of the decision of the committee on an application must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name, address, and email address because the Committee of Adjustment and in the event of an appeal, the Toronto Local Appeal Body will be sending local notifications and appeal updates by email. If you do not agree with the decision of the committee rendered today, decisions may be appealed to the Toronto Local uh, it's Toronto Appeal Body, Toronto Local Appeal Body, TLAB, or in some limited circumstances to the Ontario Land Tribunal. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the decision of the committee. The hearing procedure will be as follows. I will call each item in the order listed in the agenda after uh, dealing with uh, preliminary matters and getting rid of some uh, matters that would be deferred. Other than that, we proceed in order. Um, we don't vet like we did when we were meeting back in public. Uh, in making your submissions where an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant may proceed with uh, a presentation if desired, where the committee does not require presentation. Applicants are to advise the chair should they wish to uh, speak to the committee. The committee may ask questions and or take then take the matter into the committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant or agent, is given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. Uh, the clock is shown up on the screen and uh, we will comment when you're reaching a five minute mark and ask you to wrap up. When addressing the committee, please clearly state your name and address and please remember to confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. The applicant or agent proceeds first and makes their presentation to the committee. Please note that the committee may not entertain the revisions to proposals made at the hearing today. The committee may decide to either defer the application if being substantially revised in order to ensure that the revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to notice of the application have been informed of the changes. Then individuals either in support or opposed to the application will be invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker after they finish their presentation. And when all three speakers are finished, the applicant or agent has the opportunity to rebut only those issues and answer those questions were raised by the speakers. That will then mark the end of the discussion and the application was then taken into the committee for a decision. Okay, some preliminary matters. I believe we have the minutes of the June 30th uh, hearing to adopt. 
Um, can I have a motion uh, from panel member to uh, adopt those minutes? Mr. Taylor, thank you. Second. Yes, I'll move approval, Mr. Chair, of the June 30th minutes. Thank you. Ms. Alderson, prepared to second that. Thank you. All in favor? Minutes are approved. Okay. Um, and again, we don't see um, is uh, Sophia Ruddick with us, or she's still having difficulty joining. Sorry. Just about to ask if there's through you, Mr. Chair. I'm going to try and uh, reach out to her again. I have been in contact with her with via email, so I'm going to I'm going to try and get it working. Okay. So just to introduce today. Uh, panel members are Danny Bellissimo, Donald Taylor, Laura Alderson, and Sophia Ruddick, and I am Michael Stark, the panel chair. Okay, so um, okay, so I just was able to ask if any declarations of interest and in panel or staff uh, to declare on this morning's agenda. Okay, I see head shaking. No, none to declare. Uh, deferral requests. I guess we'll go through our deferral memo uh, memo next. Uh, Madam Secretary Treasurer. Pardon me. Um, Actually, and I think my computer has come back on. I just have to put back my password. Um, so we'll go to the, the planning, um, the, the deferral memo. We have a number of uh, items on that. There's also uh, a couple of other items I've seen uh, and even might have been on this, on this afternoon's agenda, but uh, that are also look like uh, after the fact uh, deferral requests by applicants. So we can deal with that as well. Okay, so the first item on the memo and is item number, uh, let's call item number three, Madam Secretary Treasurer, 5542nd Street. I see, um, well, I guess we can just deal with that one as it goes through. That is a request by transportation and uh, ravines to defer this matter. Yes, TRCA. Okay, yeah, and, uh, and our, I think TRC and all, or maybe not um, ravines. The next yeah, item I see is, is looking for a deferral uh, in order to allow time to then provide a parking justification letter, I believe. Yes. So let's call that one item number three. Speaker for this item uh, is Lance Caprillian, the agent for the applicant. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. It's Lance Caprillian. Welcome. Thank you. We we are aware of this uh, these deferral requests, and we are in agreement uh, with them. And we've already started the conversation with TRCA, so we'll we'll um, we'll we'll take care of that uh, before before presenting to you. Okay. So uh, in that case, can I have a motion to defer? I'm happy to make that motion for deferral. Thank you, Ms. Alderson. Seconder for that motion. Mr. Taylor, thank you. All in favor? Okay, it's unanimous. Uh, the matter is deferred. We'll see you back here, Mr. Caprelli, in uh, another day. Be well. Okay, the next item on the memo is item number 542, Guthrie Avenue. And the speaker for that application is Juan Martinez. Uh, we also have two other speakers registered and the neighbors actually on both sides of 44 and 40 registered to speak and I guess on the line. Uh, we have a request from community planning. Um, this is for a new dwelling with an attached garage. Uh, we had a revised notice with five variances to which were revised, but we have a request for deferral, uh, I guess now as well from the applicant due to a miscalculation. So I guess we don't have the correct variances before us. Uh, Juan Martinez. Good morning, sir, chairman, committee members. Good morning. Um, I that's correct. I do want to note that we don't believe that a deferral is longer necessary. We have obtained a new zoning notice uh, from the city's uh, building department, and we have submitted that to the committee, which confirms um, all the variances that are in front of you for this application. Okay, because I said uh, it looked like uh, we had a memo from you dated July the 6th that you made a that's, formal request. That's uh, correct. So I guess, Madam Secretary Treasurer, when someone makes a formal request, I guess they can rescind that request. Uh, we can proceed on this matter. I know we don't like the block. Uh, and 
agendas with many deferred items. So what's this, can we proceed on this? It's, it's a bit misleading though then to the public because if they've seen that on the file, they may That's not participate. Yeah. Having and, said that, um, we now have a segue. We have both from Jason Habers on the line. So you're right, I guess. Uh, so is the, uh, yeah, we did have a, a, a opposition letter uh, from 40. And now we have the neighbors here from 40 and uh, 44. Who've, uh, Sorry. No, we're saying that requests are here. So uh, Madam Secretary Treasurer, what's the, uh, the issue on that? Because it was a formal request. He didn't. So if the matter has been deferred, uh, they were made the request, can that be rescinded? Like you said, there may not be everyone participating. We are fortunate to have both adjacent neighbors here. So sorry, through you, Mr. Chair. Then the neighbor at forty four did register. He did not appear on the Webex. I reached out to him to see if he was planning on joining us, and he said that he um, was unsure due to I think scheduling. But I advise that he'll receive a copy of the decision, or if it, in the event of a deferral, a, a new public hearing notice. Okay. Okay, uh, Madam Secretary, I don't know if this is something that you should rule on or the members. Um, I want to see we have uh, Sophia Ruddick with, with us. Welcome. Glad you were able to get through those communication issues. So the issue is, as you say, uh, perhaps that gentleman, someone saw that it was being deferred and didn't bother to uh, register. And also because there was the written request to defer, I didn't go over the proposal, the revisions. That's true. Um, Maybe some members. Okay, so let's um, a motion to uh, defer this matter, notwithstanding the applicant is uh, now advising he wishes to proceed. Any comments? Anyone would like to discuss uh, the issue on that? Mr. Bellissimo? I'm, I'm ready to move a deferral based on what Barbara has told us. Thank you. Okay, does anyone else want to need any comment or discussion before that? If none, okay, Mr. Bellissimo, go ahead and make that motion. Move for deferral. Okay, for the reasons stated. Set Ms. Alderson, seconding that, no comment, thanks. Uh, all in favor? Okay, the matter is deferred. Um, oh, we didn't, we, we did have the one neighbor on the line, but anyway, the other neighbor couldn't join us. And uh, Mr. Martinez, I guess, uh, you know, when you make a, a request like that, there are ramifications and for anyone else listening. Thank you. Okay, so the first item on the planning list uh, for request for deferral recommendation is item number eight, and that is 17 we do have Melody item Road. Six from the agent. Oh, item six. Okay. Right. It was after. Okay. Item six, 59 Hardwick Court. Uh, we have a deferral request. Morning, Council. My name is Matthew Rebo, a perspective okay. use okay. agent okay. representing the owners of 59 Hardwick. Okay, welcome, sir. I just want to point out for the record that when I said the applicant made a formal request, it was you that made the formal request. The gentleman above, um, he requested it due to a miscalculation. He didn't say formal, but that was just some extra, you know. I have a similar case, though. <laughs> yes. So we had a zoning review that seems to have a miscalculation as well. Therefore, the variances are not exactly as required. In fact, we need just based on the definition of the building depth and the interesting lot configuration that we have, we act, we believe we need a greater, we need to ask for variance for a greater lot depth. The building didn't change, but it does not, it's greater than what was on the zoning review. So we, we're struggling to get a hold of the zoning examiner though, and we're not sure how to, to reach him. He hasn't responded to any voicemails or uh, emails. So well, I'm not sure what to can, do in this situation. You can perhaps <clears throat> call committee staff and they can help you uh, connect. Yeah, uh, they're they're looking into it. And uh, hopefully, uh, regardless, we need to defer because public needs to be notified. We understand this. Yep. And, uh, and, and hopefully we can get this resolved. Alternatively, we'll submit a waiver um, confident with our calculations. So. Okay, so and again, I don't, <clears throat> I see in the uh, planning had weighed in and asked you to modify or eliminate variance five. Uh, uh, yes, we were able to remove that as well. Right. Okay. So that's great. Um, it can be sorted out on the waiver. Okay. And I see we do not have anyone else uh, on the line. 
miss your abode. So no other neighbors are on the line. So uh, committee members, any questions of uh, the agent or is someone ready to bring a motion to defer? I agree with the applicant and move for deferral. We're just going to have to pause. It looks like we've lost our chair. So we'll oh. wait for him to rejoin. I was waiting for a second. <laughs> So just for anyone while we're waiting, if you've asked to participate using video, you actually have to turn on the video yourself. Um, we don't have that ability to do that. There you go. Good to know. Stand by, folks. We've noticed a technical difficulty, but we'll correct it in two moments. Michael, if you could turn your your um, camera on, that'd be great. Thank you. Or let your camera. So there's our chair. There I am. So just to reiterate that, I did move uh, for deferral based on what the applicant uh, told us. Yes. Okay. So I did move for deferral, and we're just waiting for a seconder. I'll second that motion. Okay, thank you. Uh, all in favor? Thank you. Oh, I don't know why I lost communication. So the matter is deferred. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Matthew, and we'll see her again. Okay, so now moving on to the first item on the uh, staff memo is item number eight, 17 Melody Road. And this uh, it's on the memo is item number six, deferral recommendation. The speaker is, this is Francesco, Francesco Cigenardo, who is the owner of the property. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. I see we have here item deferral number six reason, which is an applicant's request for the deferral. Uh, it's apparently automatic, it says here, um, unless you wish to would, would have proceeded on what was circulated. Well, I think, uh, please, if we can defer, that be that be appreciated, just because um, you know it's on the on the owner of the the home, and the folks that are helping us with the application have spoken to some some other representatives at the city, uh, and through some conversations between them we've all agreed that it's best to to defer uh, because there are some some i guess calculation changes that have to be made and again neighbors and the surrounding community has to be made aware and so we want to give an opportunity for that to happen uh so yes please defer all if possible okay and i it was kind of i i saw in the additional materials um uh, they had previously said in the staff report to either lo lower the uh coverage to 31 percent or refuse that variance and then they change to say no we just want their variance refused but it turns out i think the performance standard is 33 percent so perhaps that can be clarified uh, as well uh, whether the performance standard is 31 that's or 33. for item nine that's for item oh sorry my notes and my notes in the wrong spot okay sorry that's for the next application uh thank you barb okay uh so motion to defer Members, any or any questions before that? I'll, I'll move deferral, Mr. Chair, for the reasons stated. Thank you. Seconder for that. Ms. Reddick, thank you. All in favor? It's unanimous. The application is referred, so we'll uh, see you again. Thank you. Okay. The next item, I believe, is item number 13. Request for deferral at 112 Newcastle Street. Speaker on this application is uh, Nick Ruse Ali Poor. And then we had um, a registered speaker at 32 Kenny, Rafael Gomez, or Gomes. Um, so let's let's hear the, 
from the uh, applicant. Uh, this is an application. It was to, for a detached dwelling with an attached garage with five variances. And I see there's a, it's, uh, there's a missing variance on this, which is the reason for the uh, deferral. So is uh, Nick Ruse Ali Poor on the line, either by video or audio? Through through you, Mr. Chair, he I, I he was there during sound check, and I'm unable to locate him now. Okay, and I guess while you're trying to find him, we have. Uh, the neighbor at 32 Kenny on the line, just to weigh in and uh, mention that since they're online, that the matter is, has to, is automatically has to be deferred. So do we have Ms. Mr. Uh, Gomes? Hello. Gomes? Hello. Uh, hi there. Hi, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you state your name? Hi. Yeah, yes, Rafael Gomes at 32 Kenny neighbor uh, across the street of 112 Newcastle. Um, okay. I'm just calling in um, in regards to um, just I wanted to speak to um, all the proposed. Uh, okay, so I guess sir, I know you want to do that, but unfortunately today is not going to be the day for that because this matter has you know, to be okay. deferred. I was just touching base with you on that. There's a missing variance. The matter is going to have to be deferred and recirculated. So there will be an opportunity okay. to deal with it at another time. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. Okay, have a wonderful day. Bye now. Uh, so we, do we find Nick Ruse Alipur? Uh, sorry, Mr. Chair, no. No. Okay, I guess, uh, Madam Secretary Treasurer, do it. It's an automatic deferral in any event. I guess we don't technically need to hear from the applicant or agent. So uh, let's just have a motion to defer. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Any comment? No. Uh, no, I'll, I'll uh, move deferral, Mr. Chair, for the uh, uh, per the applicant's request. Thank you. Happy to second that. Thank you, Ms. Alderson. All in favor? Okay, the matter is deferred. Uh, so we'll see Mr. Ali Poor here another time. Uh, next one is item number 1715, uh, Darren Court. For it's a one story uh, rear addition with, uh, a, a, with a detached garage, shed, swimming pool in the rear yard. Um, we have, I think, six, 16 variances. Uh, we have a deferral for reasons one and two. And the speaker on this application is um, Lucas Cocomello, the agent for the applicant. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair and committee members. Uh, can you guys hear me? Right, can you try speaking a little uh, louder? I'm having trouble hearing you. Sorry, sir. Better. Do you hear me now? Yes. Perfect. Yes, yeah, so I'm here today representing the homeowners of 15 Darien Courts. Uh, we have been in contact with community planning and it was agreed that uh, we would go and for the applications to further discuss uh, the variances that are being requested today and try to reduce them as much as possible. Okay. Uh, members, any questions for Mr. Cocomello or is uh, someone prepared to bring a motion of deferral? I'll bring a motion to defer this application. Thank you, Ms. Reddick. Seconder for that, Ms. Alderson, thank you. All in favor, the matter is deferred. And we'll see you here again, Mr. Cocomello. Have a good day. Okay, so in that case, we can move back up to the top of the agenda and start hearing applications. The first application is item number one, 83 Floral Parkway. It's an application um, to uh, construct a two-story addition, a second-story addition of the existing dwelling, a rear yard deck, and the garage yard. And um, there are three variances. We have a presentation from the applicant. And um, speaker on this application is Ida Evangelista. Welcome. 
Good morning, Mr. Chair, members. I'm Evangelista on behalf of the owners. <clears throat> Today, um, would you do you want a, a presentation? Okay, members, would you like a presentation from Mrs. Evangelista? Or, or... I can just go through the various. I, I don't see quickly. any. I can't see everyone on the screen to see if they like it or not. But if you want, just briefly okay. go. Yeah. Sure. So um, we have three variances. Uh, the, the what we're doing is this is an existing home, an addition alteration to an existing home. The side yard setback is um, due to uh, the existing home, and we are aligning our addition to the existing house. Um, however, on the that's on the west side, we have 1.22 to line up with the existing home. And on the east, we have a side yard setback of 3.2. Um, we have another variance that states that we're proposing three stories. And the reason for that, and if you refer to my submission, um, you'll see on page three, you'll see why um, we do have that variance because this is one of the older homes with the you know lower basement so the basement is closest to the established grade than the first floor and that's why it's a, a technical variance that's why we have the three stories and our 35 percent coverage just want to break that down for you the house is actually 28 percent and the garage is 6.8 percent and that's why we have uh, that's why we have a coverage of the additional 5%. I'm open for any questions that you may have. Members, any questions uh, for the agent or somebody from open? No further questions. Danny Vanessa is ready to make the motion. Okay. Yeah, Dan. Okay, uh, so I find the variances are minor in nature. The applicant has clearly explained why it's really a two story house. The, the basement is really um, not first floor, but really a basement. So um, move for approval of the variance. I find a minor in nature. Thank you. Seconded for Mr. Bellissimo's motion. Uh, I'll second that, but I just wanted to ask the applicant's agent whether she was aware of the Metrolinx uh, advisory comments. Hello? Just wondering, can you hear me? Uh, sorry, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I was muted. Yes, okay. Sorry, you but you're aware, of the, you're aware of the Metrolink, yeah. Metrolink's his comments about the uh, proximity to, uh, to the rail corridor? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, yes, member, uh, we are aware of it. I did see their memo and we will address it. Okay, thank you. And in that case, I'll second it. Okay, thank you. All in favor? We have unanimous approval. Thank you. Uh, next application is item number two, one Abu Foil Crescent Pent uh, Penthouse 2. This is an application to construct a uh, sunroom at the penthouse level with existing condo level 24 unit four. And we have a, a authorization from the condo to uh, to build uh, one variance being the uh, very minor FSI variance of 0 0.06 is what I noted, no conditions. And the speaker on this is David Abelman. Welcome, sir. And good morning, Mr. Chair and committee members. Uh, David Eagleman, planner on behalf of uh, the unit owner. And uh, my address is 900 The East Mall, Suite 300. Um, and uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I don't think a full presentation is necessary. I don't uh, think so. You can't get any more minor than 0 0.06 uh, of a meter in FSI. Yes, and, and through you, Mr. Chair, I'll note the variance itself is actually even more minor because the, the proposed sunroom is only 15.12 square meters. However, there's an additional 510.94 uh, square meters in the variance itself because I believe there was a previous committee of adjustment uh, decision for this building, which permitted that additional 500, 510 square meters, but uh, it is being included within this variance as well. Okay. Uh, members, any questions or uh, is anyone ready to weigh in with a motion? Mr. Taylor? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, I find the 
the requested variance very minor meets the four tests uh there's no uh, concerns expressed by anybody public or uh, uh agencies etc so i move approval without conditions seconded by ms alderson thank you all in favor the application is unanimously approved and um i saw there's a Okay, no. Okay, no, no. I thought there was never been forced you, but that's another application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chair and committee members. Okay, thank you. Our next application is on um, item number four for Burren Court. Is this to construct a second story addition above the existing dwelling? The speaker is Diane uh, Lucreziano. Hi there. Good morning. Good morning. I see one of the co-owner of the property and we have on this application a revised uh, uh, notice sheet for the agenda showing changes made uh, revision pursuant to a waiver. So you you had uh, three variances, one of which has been revised, which is the FSI from 0.6 to 0.58. Uh, we have obviously the revised plans and correspondence dealing with the revision. Uh, planning is asking for a condition of approval in event of approval that it be constructed as illustrated on the architectural uh, site plan uh, dated July 4th regarding the east side setback of the second uh, second floor addition. Okay. okay, and urban forestry is we're looking for their condition number one. Um, members, I don't, do you want a presentation from the applicant or just see if someone has any questions? Um, Mrs. Lucrezania, would you like to advise the committee members of anything? Uh, yeah, I just, um, the reason for this is um, this was my family home, kind of decided to move back there. My mother is still residing there on her own, needs some help. So in order to um, make it fit, accommodate my family of four, we just needed an extra bedroom and a little extra space, personal space. So we decided to add that over the existing um, house right now. Okay, uh, members, do you have anyone have any questions or if some ready to uh, either make comment or make a motion? And I believe the planning memo does acknowledge the reduction in the FSI as well. That's correct. Mr. Taylor? Hey, Mr. Chair, I'm satisfied the uh, variances requested meet the four tests under the Planning Act. And I move approval subject to urban forestry condition one and the community planning department condition. Okay, thank you. Seconded for Mr. Taylor's motion. Mr. Bellissimo, thank you. All in favor? Okay, you have unanimous approval. Thank you. Okay, um, item number seven is our next application as six and, and five have been deferred. Uh, so item seven is 1226 Islington Avenue. It's an application to permit a bus terminal. And uh, there is, I believe, a condition of approval. Um, yeah, committee planning is obviously asking that this be limited to a uh, five-year time period. I believe we have the same memo and the additional materials as well as a... Uh, TTC uh, cover letter uh, giving the planning rationale, uh, tree inventory, and um, the only variance is this is not a permitted use in an ECS zone. And we have Metrolinks and transportation conditions of approval. Uh, Ravines has no condition. We have Metrolinks advisory, and um, again, the five the five-year limited time period, as we explained in the, in the planning memo. And the speaker is Hadi Jafari, the agent for the applicant. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Hadi Jafari. I'm representing TTC on this file in front of you. Uh, if, if there's need for any presentation, I would be happy to, to present it to the committee, or I can provide a, a short background on, on this matter. Yeah, I see we had, uh, there, we didn't have anything until we got the additional materials. We had your cover letter, including your, the planning rationale and the other matters. 
Um, so committee members, do you have any questions or would you like uh, Mr. Jafari, and nice to see you joining us in, in video, not how many people have taken that option this morning so far. Uh, and I think it's a good thing. Um, would you like a short presentation from uh, Mr. Jafari to go along with his letter? We just have, does anyone have any questions? Danny Bellissimo is ready to make a, um, a motion if there's no further questions. Okay. Thank no one else has any questions of Mr. Jafari on this matter. Okay, thank you. Mr. Taylor. Uh, I'd just like to ask the gentleman, um, is the community planning department's requested condition for a five-year time limit problematic for you, or are you confident in the, um, the city initiated zoning bylaw amendment, which would presumably permit what you're trying to do here? Yes. Is this um, risky for you, or are you confident? Good question. Probably not. I can't imagine you tearing the thing down in five years. I guess that's what I'm getting at. Uh, thank you, Mr. Taylor. Uh, um, we believe that the five-year uh, period is, is uh, su sufficient enough for, for our cause. The only reason that we are asking for this interim measure is that uh, our rezoning application through the city planning uh, may de get delayed because of the, the council recess this year. And, and because we are on the tight line, uh, deadline for, for the AODA uh, legislative mandate of 2025, we thought that uh, this, this might be the best option based on the recommendation of the community planning. I think five-year period is, is uh, ample time for, for us to... to uh, yeah, it's a, like a full, ter full, ter full term of council, right? Uh, the I rest of this one and the next one. Five years is a long time in politics. Quite weak attempt at humor. Thank you. I'd be pleased to uh, second Mr. Bellissimo's motion. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Okay, of unanimous approval. Best of luck. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Have a very good day. Sorry, Mr. Bellissimo, is that subject to the planning condition? Um, yes, I actually did make a motion that um, I move for approval subject to the conditions by planning. Okay, and then Don Taylor seconds, and everyone's in support. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Thank you. Sure, I understood that to be in the motion, but yeah, I'm happy with it. Okay. Okay, uh, item eight has been deferred. So item nine is our next application, 16 Wesley Crescent. Uh, I'm going to take some time to represent uh, to there's a lot on this, this looking at my notes I filled in my whole box um, and there was some issues with the book keep with the uh, bookmarks of this of the new all the plans were had it's every page had a separate bookmark it was kind of strange but uh, this is when I mentioned to Mr. Bursella earlier that there was one that was kind of weird so anyway let's uh, just go through this we do have an, four speakers registered uh, in addition to the applicant on this matter this is to construct a new dwelling with an attached garage. There are six variances. We have existing survey. We have uh, plans, cover letter. Uh, we have um, yeah, we have an uh, undated, um, un sorry, not undated, um, in, uh, an unsigned objection. And it was actually bookmarked in our matters as a cover letter, but it's actually an objection letter. Planning is looking to uh, either, and I just one I just talked about earlier by mistake on the previous application. Planning has sent a memo saying they wanted variance one modified from 40.39 to 31% or to refuse it if the variance. Uh, in the additional materials, we were advised that, uh, in fact, the staff report was revised just to say they just wanted it, refuse uh, outright that application, that not application, that variance. Uh, no longer agreed to 31%, but in the variance, it looked like 33% is permitted. So that's, I think I'd want to, want to hear from the agent on that, on that matter. Um, they also want planning in the event of approval, want it uh, tied to the site plan regarding the east side yard setback. Urban forestry was looking for a deferral on this. And... Um, in the additional materials, I believe, if I'm correct, the applicant has given us no less than 20 precedent decisions. 
um, scrolling, scrolling through carpal tunnel uh, issues. But um, we'll hear from them. You know, good thing we don't no longer have our applications uh, printed out and delivered to us because it would be the waste of a lot of trees. So um, that is basically um, what we have before us. I assume we're going to get a presentation from the applicant, who is Marzena C. Pars, and then we'll hear from uh, the four neighbors that are registered to speak. Perhaps we should, Annalisa, are all these neighbors on the line? Just so the applicant knows when he makes his... I mean, uh, uh, yes, they are. Everyone's aware of people. Yes, they we are. We do have four neighbors speaking on this. Yes. Okay, and hopefully some of them or everyone's on video, uh, but we'll see. So, so, Mr. Chair, uh, just to explain what happened with the staff memo, I guess there's a bit of confusion. The plans that were submitted with the zoning review do not match what they submitted with their committee of adjustment application, which they're not supposed to switch out the plans. Okay. And that's why planning has a concern with the proposed coverage. If you look at the site statistics on their plans, it does show the 31%, which is what they were trying to accomplish. So ultimately, their recommendation is to refuse the variance for coverage, which is why they amended the report. Correct. Because they do have a concern with that figure. Okay, yeah, it seems yes. rather large. We'll hear from the agent on that. Uh, also, again, in addition to urban forest, oh no, um, that was on the other one. I think urban forest is looking for conditions two and four on this one. And basically that's, uh, you know, whatever happened, happened, but we, there's a, the bookkeeping, it's where things go wrong, things go wrong in this. But we, uh, did, I want to hear from you. I think he gave us like 20 precedents on uh, other decisions. So again, uh, let's have a presentation from uh, Marzena Zipars. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? We're good. Uh, so we want to have, I guess you have five minutes to make a presentation and please uh, if you can touch base on the, uh, the issues uh, that you've heard me mention in the uh, introduction. Yes. So um, the, in regards to the law coverage, we do have the 31%. Sorry, are you um, going to appear by, are you appearing by video and not there's, there's that in your intention uh, by, by audio? Yeah, by phone. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, Go ahead. So yeah, I'm by phone. Yeah. So our lot coverage is actually 31%. Um, so we did adjust a few things there, so we could be under. Um, now the house that is there right now has been there for about 15 years, and it has been on, unoccupied, and it was actually set on fire about five years ago. So we would like to pretty much build a new house, um, four bedroom, two story, to accommodate the family. Um, so what we're, there's two minor variances. So it has something to do with the garage, which is three feet from uh, the property instead of four. Um, the reason being is so we can have a single garage that lines up with the existing driveway. Now, also the GFA is 55. And from what I understand, it is supposed to be 45 max. Um, and that is because we would like the four bedroom home as opposed to the three, which really wouldn't accommodate our family. Um, and especially because one works from home, so an office is needed as well. Um, and yeah, so that's about it. So it looks so. My question for you, first of all, you're you're not. Are you an agent, or you're the co the homeowner, or? So I'm actually I'm not the homeowner. I was just um, I'm just kind of doing everything on behalf of the applicant. Oh, okay. Just when you're um, saying we, I thought I was just wondering if you're a registered agent or if you're the actual homeowner. So. Uh, but you said you said you have six variances. You said something about I have two variances. But I saw something yeah, you said two you got two. Sorry? Yeah, there's two here. Oh uh, yeah, there's two. Is this we're on uh sixteen Wesley right now? Yeah, sixteen Wesley. So here I have the two, um, and that's in regards to the four space index. Um what we have proposed and the garage setback. The garage setback. Is that what you guys have, or is it? Am I looking at the wrong one here? I'm looking at six variances. Yeah, me too. So that's what I'm saying. There's six variances, not two variances. Okay, so we have okay, so we have the permitted maximum floor space index, required minimum side yard setback, uh, maximum permitted height to the roof midpoint, 
which is seven and a half meters, and the proposed height to the roof midpoint is 7.64. Okay, so you know you have six variances, not two. So you didn't, did you mention when you first started saying that you meet the coverage? Because your coverage is to 40.39, permitted is 33%. So, yeah, so community we planning, actually, so if you, ma'am, community planning, have you read the, uh, in the uh, information center? They are recommending refusal of that variance. Can you live with 33% or do you have 40.39% is what your plans indicate your variance is for? So uh, the plan is, so we have the 31%. I know the lot coverage is the 33, but we actually brought it down to 31%. So are you withdrawing variance number one? Yes. Okay, and in the future, please make sure that whatever plans you submit with our office match what the zoning review is based on because you should have gone with a waiver if you changed your plans. Okay. So, okay. Okay. So, okay, so the applicant has withdrawn variance number one as being requested by community planning, and we have the remainder of the application with the uh, urban forestry request for deferral. Can you touch on the issue with the trees? Urban Forestry uh, is looking to have this matter deferred and they're looking for the conditions two and four. Are those conditions acceptable to you or your client? Uh, yes. Okay. And we have two letters of opposition and we have four people registered to speak. So just stay on the line and you'll, uh, uh, you'll have a chance to respond to what the neighbors have to say uh, on this, okay? <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Chair, okay. before we proceed, if I may. Yes. Uh, uh, just on the tree issue, urban forestry in a memo dated July 4th, additionally requested condition one, which has to do with city owned trees. So it's actually conditions one and two together that they have requested in separate communications. Okay, thank you. Okay. And I guess the applicant, you, you provided us a uh, copious amount of pre precedence. Uh, just would you like to touch base in your presentation or you just kind of threw it against the wall? Uh, was I correct? There were over 20 notices of decision attached to your application? Yeah, so I actually, so what, what I did was I also attached some supporting documents of home in 250 meter radius um, with notice decisions for similar like properties. I've also attached eight, but nine supporting letters from neighbors, uh, surrounding neighbors, um, which I'm not sure why everything was separate. Yeah. Uh, did we have the supporting letters before us in the uh, either additional materials, Madam Secretary, Treasurer or staff? They're on screen now, Mr. Chair. Okay, right. Okay, I remember seeing that. That was in the additional materials again. Uh, looking, you look at the municipal address. I don't know how close those people are on Wesley, but in any event, um, it is what it is. Uh, those addresses, so members have that. Uh, does anyone else have any questions for the applicant before we hear from the neighbors? Okay, uh, we have Mr. Taylor did make his his comment about to clarify the urban forestry conditions. So let's hear from the first neighbor. Uh, maximum five minutes. Next door neighbor at 14 Wesley, uh, Christine uh, Pipe. Yes, hello. Hello, and I believe uh, we have a letter. Uh, perhaps we can get that your letter up on the screen as you're speaking. That would be great, thank you. Okay, welcome. Thanks. Okay, so I guess my first comment is, sorry, my, I'm losing my voice, so I sound a bit rough. Um, it doesn't seem that this hearing is set up to make it fair for the average homeowner when paid representatives for the builders who have a financial in, interest in the situation are speaking. So very curious about the process and also really curious about how many are not approved because it just seems that everything is approved that, you know, has these uh, committee of, of adjustment minor variances. Um, I saw only three objectors, um, objective letters or supporting letters. Um, and now it's mentioned that there's nine. I only saw three on the website, uh, two of which were people on our street um, who, will, who are far removed from the home. Um, so they will not 
see the street. Um, one of those uh, supporters already has a very large home on the street. The other is now currently renting uh, the uh, home and will be building in probably the next year or so. Sorry, so. ma'am, if I can, if I can just help you, just uh, go through that. The, the and perhaps they were some additional sort of like just a like a form letter signed by some people and with addresses, and some of them seem quite far away from municipal. Uh, so the members will see those letters and weigh them based on where they are on the street in relation to this house. Obviously, you're the most di directly affected neighbor being directly written next door. So yeah. it's not a numbers game. It's not that they have nine letters and you only have three against. That's not how it works. The committee members are aware that the more directly uh, affected and someone go down and uh, all the, you know, go down and get signatures Some people are less directed like on a, you know, a front, a rear edition, they get letters from people across the street. Well, they're not affected by it. So the committee members are able to weigh the, uh, the weight of the letters uh, that come in. And we just want to hear now, uh, you know, whatever, in terms of whether the deck is stacked and the planner, I, at, you know, at a more formal at the OMB or some at the Ontario Land Tribunal, you have a planning, this, a planning person speaking on your behalf, you need planning evidence to the contrary. We don't work that way. So you are an effective neighbor and just be rest assured that your, your comments will be, are listened to. Okay. Okay. It's, I do appreciate so that. Just, um, and sorry for interrupting. We'll give you more time if you need. So no we want to hear what your concerns are in okay. relation to how this affects you. It doesn't affect the neighbor who's uh, 40 houses away. Right. Sure. Okay. Fair enough. So as I did state in my comments, um, there were six variances. I guess there's now five. Um, and I wouldn't be calling them minor. And I'm most concerned about the building be being so close to my own home. Um, it's going to be obviously blocking sunlight. I'm going to be looking at uh, a brick wall through my dining window. It's going to be very difficult to access the east side of my house where I do have some landscaping. I've got a window. I've got an air conditioner that will need circulation. Um, the agent has said that, you know, they're going to be building the garage probably right on the edge of the driveway. I've got some very mature shrubs um, that I'll probably have to pull out now. Um, you know, all this vegetation is good for the environment, um, but I'll probably have to pull them out now just to gain access to that side of the house, which I'm obviously not very happy about that. Um, you know, I'm curious about the stairs that are going to be built on the west side. Uh, obviously, that's not going to affect me, but just uh, very curious about why they need outside stairs going to the basement. Um, you know, and as I said, uh, you know, I questioned what, why people, you know, uh, need to to build such large homes when they're you're buying smaller lots. Um, I'm also very concerned about the building process um, and, you know, being built so close to my home, uh, possibly damaging my foundation. Um, the new owners, since they've had the place, they've already dumped all kinds of wood and uh, other things in the backyard. They've not cut up, cut up with the uh, cutting of the grass. Uh, looks totally awful. Um, so, you know, I'm wondering what's going to be the mess during the building of this home, if if so far that's what they've they've shown about the caring of the place. Um, and it shows that they don't really care about what the neighbors see. So, you know, these, these are my concerns. It's going to be a very large house um, on a small, you know, a smaller property. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Ms. Pike. Does anyone have any questions uh, for the speaker before we go on to the neighbor, to the next neighbor? No? Okay. Uh
It's up to you. Okay, no, I don't mind. Whatever you guys want. I'm, I'm okay to be seen or not seen. But okay, at least I'm being heard. So, sorry. Can you just state your name and address? Sorry? We have the room back, so can you just state your name and address? Oh, so you Nicola, can Nicola Kentridge, 89 Burlingame Road. I'm sorry, my dog is barking. The mailman's here. Um, okay, so do, am I on the clock? Yes. Okay, so um, I'm just going to address my concerns, and then if I have time left over, I guess I'll say something else. But uh, my two big concerns are that I have concerns to the precedent that this would set if we, we allowed all these six, now five, variances. Um, I worry about the changes to the neighborhood, and for me, these are significant changes. Um, I also concur with the first speaker, the first neighbor. Um, why so big? I live in a two-bedroom bungalow with a family of four, so and I know that's a choice for me, but I also just question the, um, you know, that first variance that talks about a 40% lot area. Um, yeah, Ma'am, that has been withdrawn, that variance? It, that, right. that variance is being withdrawn. Okay, yes, but there's still this issue of uh, 55 times the area of the lot. I'm just reading the letter. Yeah. I'm not actually in this, this business, so I don't speak um, this dialect, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> so I just want to let you know, but the, the coverage issue, which was a great concern to the city, the planning department yeah. has been withdrawn by the applicant. They no longer have a variance for coverage. Okay, I just worry yeah. that sometimes things get built and then people say, whoops and ask questions afterwards. I, I, I'm just very nervous about this one. It feels like it's a really, um, they're, they're huge requests. My big concern is I have two um, small bungalows at either side of me that could be sold at any time or um, owners could decide to renovate. So I worry about having um, houses so close to each other. I certainly have my air conditioner at the side of the, the house. So I'm look, looking at number three and four, I guess the, the side yard setbacks. Um, and so those have great concern to me because it would be horrible if, if two big homes were built beside me and they were taking my son and um, taking my uh, space to work beside my house and all of that kind of stuff. I, I also worry about that. The height also seems quite tall um, and I worry about shadows and, and sunlight and I worry about houses this large. We have a lot of green in our neighborhood so our 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 neighborhood looks a certain way. There's, it, it's a beautiful neighborhood with lots of trees and lots of green space. And so if we're allowing houses to be built that are so large, we, we take away from that. Um, and then, so lastly, um, you have four points that, that uh, just to quote the letter, it says to approve such variances, the committee must be satisfied that. And so I just wanna to speak to that and say that I feel that the variance is major, not minor. Um, I also feel that, um, and I don't know if I'm speaking properly, because again, I don't speak this dialect, but I feel like it's not appropriate to our neighborhood. We don't have huge houses. We're starting to get huge houses, and I worry about precedent. Um, our, our community was beaver cleaver bungalows, um, and now there's, the lots are starting to be bought and houses are being built. So I, I worry about the appropriate development of our land. Um, <laughs> And just the, the general intent and purpose of the official plan. I actually don't know what the official plan is, but I feel like the official plan is, um, you know, to have these kinds of neighborhoods. So to change them so radically, I wonder if there's been given thought to that. Uh, originally, the plan in the 1950s certainly was this kind of a neighborhood. So I, I don't know. I, I, those are my concerns. Um, and uh, I, hope, I hope the committee uh, thinks, thinks carefully about this one. Thank you so much. I, I hope I'm under five minutes. You are. Thank you. Okay. Any questions for the speaker uh, members? And if not, I see you are in the sort of the rear yard about four or five houses over. Uh, thank you for your submissions. Uh, the next speaker is uh, Joe Maroney uh, at 23 Wesley. And perhaps we have uh, his letter on the screen as he, as he makes his presentation. Welcome, Mr. Maroney, you're on the line, you're on video. Good morning, thank you. Um, right. I don't know if I'm on video, but I'll just do the you talking. Press uh, start video in order to do that. And I'm screen. not sure what that is. If you register to, to appear on video in advance. Uh, and I believe you okay, did. Here we go. 
it says you did register in advance to yep. use uh, video. Awesome. Okay. Thank so you. So uh, again, I'm. Uh, I sent in the letter. Um, mine was not a form letter, like all the approval letters seem to have been. It uh, somewhat in the neighborhood seems to have gone around and gotten people to sign a form letter, and they had no objections to this. Uh, most of them are people that are building bigger homes, want to have variances accepted when they do it. Um, our, my concern is that these variances, if we have city bylaws, and you people on city council are the ones that set up these bylaws, why do we have a committee of adjustment to go around changing all of these bylaws for variances so that we can the law legally? Are you saying to them, well, we accept these variances? You call them minor, we call them major. These are, there are eight bungalows along that side of the street. And this is gonna be the first one that is going to be a two-story big house. You said, and I'm confused about the variance that got dropped, variance number one. Is there a limit of 33% of the lot? Or is it 40% of the lot that can be used? Or was it 55% of the lot? Like I was listening to this, and I'm not sure exactly what the variance is. Did variance one get dropped? Am I still there? Yes, sir. Please continue. It's we don't end. The applicant will respond to your questions after oh, okay. you all, all made submissions. Okay. And we don't so, provide the answers. But just to clarify, variance one that community planning was objecting to has been withdrawn. So they are meeting the coverage. They are not meant mentioning the GFA is 10% over at 55, whereas 45% is permitted. So that is still a variance that didn't seem to be of any concern to community planning. Um, in terms of where the two story uh, nature. So obviously you're, the neighbor's position is these are all bungalows, they've been bungalows and uh, you're obviously objecting. So please continue. Yeah, I am, I'm objecting to variances. Yeah, um, again, the, the owner said, this is a, a bungalow that's been there for about 60 years. There was a fire in it about 10 years ago. It has been a derelict property for the last 10 years. The city has been responsible for cutting the lawns. We were quite thankful that it finally got sold. We were very excited about the fact that someone was going to clean up this property, make it respectable for the neighborhood. Now we're to the point where they need to have this huge home on a small lot. If they wanted a big home, they should have bought a lot that approved the variances that they're accepting. That's my final issue with it is that it's going to stick out like a sore thumb between all of these other houses on the street. There are story and a half further down the street that this would have fit in perfectly with, but where the bungalows are concerned, it's going to affect both sides of the people. The garage being too close to the neighbor's property is one issue that is a major concern. The steps coming out the uh, west side to the other property, they're going to walk smack dab into a fence. I mean, it's going to look awful. So maybe they need to rearrange their property. Do they really need that size of a house on that lot? That's my question. Thank you for the time. Thank you, sir. Uh, and panel members, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Maroney? Okay, and if not, then we uh, the next speaker is the last speaker, Virginia Fry at number 10, Wesley. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, good morning. This is the first time I've participated in a public hearing and my, my hands are sweating. <laughs> Okay, just calm down. We're a friendly group. It's very, you know, informal. Are you going to, you're on the phone or on the screen? I'm not on the screen. Sorry, okay. maybe, maybe next time, because I'm okay. sure this won't be the end. <laughs> yeah, or, or next time, maybe you'll be here and uh, maybe we'll, at some point, we'll get back to having hearings in person at the, at the council chamber. Could be, could be. Okay, um, so just don't be nervous. Just let us know. I believe you have, we have a letter. We'll get your letter up on the board as well on the screen. There we while go. While you're speaking. So, um, 
just uh, tell us what your concerns you want to most directly affect the neighbor you're two doors away. Right. Mm -hmm. So my predecessors uh, covered quite a few of the points that I had, which um, is good. But just to clarify, I'm not a paid representative, um, which I feel puts me at a disadvantage. Um, uh, not a paid representative of the builder, uh, but a neighbor. Uh, the difference is that the builder's sole objective is to please the customer. The customer's wants concentrating on the, the lot size and not the neighborhood. And I wanna stress that it's a want and not a need. As Joe had specified, these larger houses on small lots, it's not a need and it's not in conjunction with the city of Toronto's uh, um, affordable housing plan, which is what I'm assuming the side stairs are for is for a secondary family. Um, allowing the demolition and added variances of the current residents sets a precedence for the future builds. I'm in a bungalow two doors down. I know my neighbor directly beside me also wants to build. And so the decisions that are made for these houses, number 16, is going to impact future builds. Um, I've been a longtime resident of Wesley Crescent, and I came from Young and Eglinton after 17 years. One of the reasons I left Young and Eglinton was because of the hustle and bustle, and I wanted elbow room. This elbow room with these monster houses are now taking away from our, uh, our livelihood of the neighborhood. As was previously said, it takes away the sun, and you can't discount that um on a person's mental well-being a lot of time and money has been spent on backyards and side yards which will be lost um and as joe said i also don't understand why variances are also permitted to what the zoning and planning act already has set in place uh, yeah Okay. That that's it. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Fry. You did work. You did great. Don't oh, I have one question actually. This. Yeah. Um, about the mature tree on the lot, is it planning on coming down, or is that what's in question? Okay, we'll have the applicant res respond to that. In, in addition to everything else that's been stated by you and. Uh, and by the other neighbors, uh, urban forestry is, I guess, Mr. Uh, Taylor mentioned at the outset, in addition to items two and four, they're now also requesting condition number one. So there, there is some uh, issues about trees. We'll hear back from the applicant on that. Okay. Okay. So let's go back to um, Mr. Powers, uh, Powers uh, to respond to the concerns of the various neighbors. I, you know, they're concerned with the, uh, uh, you know, the coverage, the floor space index, which is over. And again, the, the, the side yards from 1.2 to 0.91 seems to be of concern uh, in terms of setting uh, a standard as so maybe these properties get converted from bungalows to something larger. So please, please yeah, have so five minutes uh, to respond to the concerns. Go ahead. Yep. So as far as the coverage so that's been dropped it's i just wanted to confirm it's 31 percent um as far as the problem i believe with the first or second speaker of the i guess how it's going to look once we're kind of building everything um or how it looks right now i mean it can't look any worse than it is right now um pretty much wildlife has been living there so i just wanted to make that clear it is also a danger to children around that area um of how it looks right now now as far as the sun coverage, I mean, that's really not in our control. Um, as far as looking at a brick wall, et cetera, I mean, there's not really much I could say. Um, we do need a bigger home. So it's not necessarily a want, it's more of a need because we have a larger family um, with the whole working from home after the pandemic, it's gonna be hard to, I mean, work from a three bedroom home. Uh, I do understand that one of the speakers did raise a family of four in the home, but unfortunately that will not work for us. As far as the side entrance from the basement goes, that's just easy access to the basement for children. Um, so that's really not much there to say as far as that. Now, I do see the other variances here. So I did just pull them up. Um, 
Now, as far as the, one second, I'm just reading. Mm -hmm. The roof midpoint, so that is, sorry, one second. So that is um, the length of the garage before the thing. Um, so it will actually, the sloped roof is for water drainage, um, for adequate water drainage, and the impact of which is imperceptible. Um, what else? For the garage, like I said before, I just, we need it to meet up with the size of the driveway, like the width. Now, the lot is a pie-shaped lot, so there's only so much we have to work with. And what else is there? I believe I covered everything. If I did not, if you guys can just, I guess, remind me. Just looking at the notes here. Uh, I think that's it. Okay. Yeah, um, I think that's it. Yeah. Okay, and you're the agent. You're in. Are you a like a registered planner or no? No, so I actually I'm not registered. So I am. I just like the other um, speakers that stated they they're not really familiar with the um, the wording, vocabulary, and everything. So I'm trying. I'm really trying my best to explain everything. Um, yep. I'm just going about what is written here. Some zoning bylaw notice, the variances, but yep. yeah. Remember, you're you're what you're doing now, ma'am, is you're responding to the concerns of the neighbor. You're not supposed to be telling anything and uh, anything new. You're just responding to. Uh, you listen to what the neighbors had to say, and it's your opportunity to rebut what they have to say or to answer the questions that they raise. And so I'm like, I'm not reminding you as to what they say. It's up to uh, you to do that, and uh, we'll see if when you're done, let us know. Um, I guess. Uh, okay. So to see if any of the members have any questions, but if you'd like to just add anything, uh, now is the time. Yeah, so as far as the trees as well, um, no trees will be taken down. And I believe one of the members had also had a worry about problem accessing the AC and the side of the house. Um, I assure you there will be no problem accessing that side of the house. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, I think I'm done. Hello? Okay, I'm back. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yes, I can. Uh, so thank you for uh, your response uh, to the neighbors' concerns. Uh, members, any questions for any of the speakers? Uh, and if not, any comment or a motion? Uh, Danny Bellesimo has some questions of the uh, presenter. If staff can put on the drawing one, which is a site plan. It's on the way. It's uh, number one. Yeah, yes. C can we zoom in on the uh, site plan itself about the statistics? Is that possible? Great. The other way. Okay, that's the site plan. Um, so my, my question has to do with a uh, number of things. Uh, I recognize the difficulty of this site is a pie shape. And um, I just wanted to clarify the, the side yard setback on the uh, right side of the drawing. That side yard setback is four feet at grade and three foot at the higher level. Is that correct? And so you're here for a setback because of the second floor area? Hello? Yes, hello, did you hear my question? Oh, I did, we... sorry, I didn't realize. No, no, um, I did hear it. So your question is, um, so why it is three feet? So from what I have here, it is that, so we could, they could have a single garage that lines up with the existing driveway. But the three foot setback, that's at the upper level. It's not at the grade level, it's at the second floor level, correct? It's, 
Um, I'm not sure if whatever it is on the plan. No, if you look at the front elevation, it's the garage that is garage. So, so as the garage is the garage is sticking out about a foot beyond the other floor. Um, and then on the other side where the stairs are, those setbacks are all at the what we call the pinch condition. That's just where the building touches the, uh, the angled side uh, side yard, right? So it's, it's obviously yeah. it's not the entire building that's uh, parallel to that. Sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah, the the other side setback where the stairs are. Yeah. Those setbacks are determined by what we call pinch conditions. That's where the um, building meets the angled property line. So the majority yeah. of the building, the majority of the building conforms to the setback of just those two pinch conditions, those two corners. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. And then the last question has to do with the height. Based on my calculation, your height you're allowed a certain height except for the top six inches. Is that correct? And that's the peak of the mm -hmm. roof. And your roof yeah. is pitched at your roof is pitched at four in twelve. So it's really just a very top piece, which is what you're not allowed. Everything else you're allowed. And you are allowed the two-story building and, and that height. I just wanted to clarify that for people who were presenting that this uh, application is really more or less within an allowed amount. This is, in other words, you're allowed more than just a bungalow in this area. I just wanted to clarify that roof condition. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bellissimo, for that. And I also point out the community planning, in addition to asking that the variance one be refused, is asking that condition of approval that it be constructed as illustrated on the site plan regarding uh, to sort of keep them to what, what you're saying. They're not asking for a complete side yard setback the whole way down. It's just where the garage is. And again, the pinch points you mentioned on the other side. So I assume any motion that would include that condition being requested by the planning department. Uh, any other questions for any of the speakers or some ready to uh, make some comment weigh in with the motion? Perhaps Mr. Bellissimo, if no one else has any other questions. Mr. Taylor. Yeah, I think uh, Mr. Bellissimo's uh, questions, uh, points of clarification served us all very well in, in sort of uh, preparing to, to move on this matter. Uh, the side yard setbacks, as, as has been clarified, are pinch points only. The dwelling height of uh, about five and a half inches taller than what is allowed is only with respect to the very peak of the roof. Uh, the coverage has been eliminated as a variance and um, you know, I think what we're left with here are five variances that meet the four tests under the Planning Act. And I move approval subject to urban forestry conditions one and two. And the community planning condition of uh, construct is illustrated. Oh, yes. And the community planning condition of uh, uh, constructed is illustrated. Thank you. Thank you. That, that would be my motion. Third. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. We have a seconder for Mr. Taylor's motion. Danny Bellissimo seconds the motion. Just to clarify, okay. that's the site plan for planning condition, not the, all the drawings. Correct. As stated in the planning uh, memo. All in favor? Okay, it's unanimous. You have unanimous approval. And thank you to the neighbors for uh, for your input. And I hope you uh, listen to what the Mr. Bellissimo and Mr. Taylor had to say about uh, how, you know, about the extent of these variances. Okay, um, so that completes item number nine. Uh, perhaps it's now almost 11 o'clock. Uh, perhaps it's time to take a 10-minute uh, break with everyone's uh, indulgence and permission, if that sounds like a good idea. About halfway through the, a little more than halfway through the agenda, um, given the referrals and everything. Okay, so we'll be back at, uh, Madam Secretary, what, uh, Five after 11 or 10 after 11? Sure. After 10. Whatever. 10 you after? Do. That's fine. 10 after. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Have a good we break, just, everyone. We just have a participant, Yuri. I think you're still here, but the file was deferred. So, I mean, if you want to just stick around and pay attention, you can.
but um, the file for 42 Guthrie was deferred earlier. Yuri? That's me, Yes. Okay, so I just wanted to let you know that this the file for Guthrie was deferred. So if you at the oh, beginning of the hearing. What do you what do you mean deferral? So the they postponed making a decision. So the it'll be rescheduled for another date. You'll get another notice in the mail. You got one for this hearing, correct? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. So when when it's rescheduled for a new hearing date, we'll send you another notice and then you can participate then. I Thank just didn't want you sitting here that. all day. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank okay. you very much. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye. Have a good day. Thank you. Have a nice day. You too. Bye.
Sorry, Michael, I think you're muted. Sorry, Michael, I think I think you're muted. I don't know if you can hear us. Can any of the other members confirm that they can hear me? Michael, go again if you came for us. Just say hi. <laughs> Members, Adam Wills, application technician here. Can you guys hear us in the council chambers?
Okay, I'm connected to. Donald, if you could just say hi for a second and see if you can hear us and we can hear you. No, I...
See, I can see the ECC chamber from my device. Call me, I can see the podium. No, I'm, I'm connected on my uh, external device. No, no, no. Oh, you. No, let me show you. Let me call you on the uh, collab with the camera. Can you guys hear me? We can hear you in the council chambers. Can you hear us in the council chambers? Yes, I can hear you in the council chamber. So the camera is working. It's not connecting to the WebEx, it means. I can see the podium. I can see the video also. Yeah, and here in council chambers, we can't see the camera that should be pointed towards the clocks. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me just uh, get in touch with the team. Standing yeah. by. Yeah.
Uh, Barb, if you can hear me, just uh, say hi back. Barb, if you can do a mic check with me. Or one of the uh, the chair or one of the... You. Oh, thank you. Yep. Okay, hello everyone. We apologize for the delay. It looks like we are back up and running. Okay, thanks members. If you're around, if you can come back and we're going to be starting with item 10, 58 Corbett Avenue.
Michael, you're muted. We have quorum, so we can continue. Okay, so we're on item number 10. Ida Evangelist is the Agent 58 Corbett. I believe I just already introduced it. Um, planning is recommending refusal. It doesn't meet the four tests. And um, we only have the one speaker, so let's hear from Mrs. Evangelista. Urban Forestry looking for condition number three. And... Um, that's it. Letters of opposition from 23, 14, and 10. Okay, this is Evangelista. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Ooh, a little bit of panic mode I had there. I'm glad we're all back in business. So, uh, first thing I'd like to start off with before we get the clock going. Uh, it, you mentioned that there's three letters of opposition. However, I looked in AIC and I didn't see any letters of opposition from 2314 and 10. That's uh, one. And my comment wait, number two. That was, that was on the, uh, probably on, on the previous application. My notes went below the list. My error. My oh, mistake. okay. All right. Okay. So with the okay. revisions, uh, no opposition. Okay. All right. right. So we and can then restart um, the can I... Okay. Okay, and can I also go back and make the comment regarding um, a member that stated uh, regarding the uh, memorandum, the memorandum was, um, did take into consideration of the changes that we made. I just wanted to go on, on record stating that. So uh, yeah. that being said, what we're proposing, uh, 58 Corbett, this is an addition alteration. However, it's being considered as a new home because more than 50% of the wall is being um, removed. So, and that's the calculation from uh, zoning. Now, uh, I want to just clarify that the variances number two and number five um, have been removed. We have three variances. Uh, number one, FSI, three main wall height, and four um, main wall height, the two main wall heights. So let's start with the wall height. So we are proposing a three-story home. Uh, this is an area that is zoned in uh, RM, residential multi-U2 uh, neighborhood with an 11 meter height and three stories is permitted. So what we've done here is we are proposing a three meter, um, sorry, <laughs> a three-story home. And um, if we look at the elevation, you'll see um, the west elevation steps back 2.14 meters. So the west elevation um, has a height of 6.71, as it's where the step back is, the top of the second floor, and then the third floor uh, gives us that main wall height. Now, this particular main wall height uh, relates to the side. We have a, a sloped roof here on one side, and Yes, optically, this does appear, you know, uh, it is, this is an area that, uh, you know, I took a walk through the neighborhood and there are bungalows, two stories, triplexes, duplexes, and semi-detached. And uh, if you've had an opportunity to go through the area, you'll see the 13 Corbett, which is also a newer home and a three story, um, also demonstrates what we're proposing. So. Uh, it's, it's a diverse area of homes and lot sizes. And what we're proposing, this is something that, you know, we back on to uh, well, uh, uh, Lane Way and along with the Woolner Apartments. And um, this is something that is close to the TTC, the Jane, um, the Jane, I'm having a block here, the Jane bus that takes us to you takes you to the Jane subway. So we're trying to encourage, and, and I believe the city's trying to encourage, um, we're trying to encourage uh, this type of use that's so close to the TCC. I understand that, you know, planning, uh, they are op opposed to this particular, you know, uh, project that we are proposing. However, you know, as we all know that you know, neighborhoods will not stay frozen in time and they are to remain stable, but not static. So what we're proposing will maintain an appropriate relationship with the surrounding area. The home will allow continued evolution in this, in this area. And uh, this is a neighborhood that is undergoing regeneration. 
I don't, I respectfully submit that I don't, um, you know, considering the location of the home and uh, how close it is to bicycle paths, uh, walkable community, and TTC, I respectfully submit that what we're proposing does meet the four tests and uh, will uh, will live harmoniously with other homes in the neighborhood. Transportation is okay with it. Uh, engineering construction services are okay with it. We are okay with the forestry conditions. And I'm open to any questions. And we have no opposition from neighbors because we have uh, modified the plan. Right, and you're okay with urban forestry condition number three, I believe. Yes. Yeah. I just need to point out, and I thought the agent was advised of this, variance number four has actually increased. Our public hearing notice went out with 9.47, and the a mm -hmm. figure of 10.84 is higher. 10.84. I know, so the committee uh, can't consider an increase. But the public hearing notice does state 10.84. No. I'm looking at, well, Deputy Secretary Treasurer, if I may, notice that went out. There was yeah. a typo on the public notice. File. Both numbers were listed 9.47 and 10.84 were both listed on the public notice that was sent out to mail. So the additional 9.47 was actually just a typo for item number four. Okay, so in the one before us, the revision page that we're being shown. It's red lined to cross out two and five, and it does, and it crossed out the main wall height of nine point four seven, which was in brackets, leaving the one at ten. So is that what went out to the public, Mr. Chair and members? The public notice that went out to the public is on the screen right now. You'll notice there it says nine point four seven and ten point four three. The nine point seven was just a typo. Ten point eight four. Ten point eight four. Okay. So, and, and and the reason for the two uh, variable heights is because there it is a sloped roof, and that's why it's taken to the highest point of 10.84. Okay. Uh, okay, so every now that everyone's clarified, members, any questions for Mrs. Evangelista? Danny Bedesimo has a question. Can you address the planning issues? You, you just said very little about that. Can you explain? Did you have a discussion with planning and can you address those issues that they raised with you? So uh, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, yes, Member Bellissimo. The reason why planning, uh, I, my colleague, uh, Mr. Faraona had a, a lengthy conversation with planning and we did, we, we, we did bring down the height um, because we have, you know, takes it to the, the highest uh, point, which is a flat roof. That's why we have that main wall height that we have. Now, the comments that they're saying that's not characteristic, this is an area that is undergoing regeneration. You know, it's being, people are now reinvesting in the neighborhood because it is so close to the TTC and the subway. So their comment is based on, um, you know, not being characteristic to the neighborhood because the, this is this is a new upcoming neighborhood and the direction of this neighborhood is you know it is zoned rm residential multi u2 uh it is has a, a permitted as of right height of 11 meters and three stories so when we take a look at the neighborhood i understand and i respect planning's comments however we also have to think you know future because the bungalows and as we all know, um, don't meet the demands of today. So we have to look at it through uh, different eyes and case to case. Uh, don't take your answer to my question. I, did they raise the issue regarding height? What was the issue that they raised to you besides uh, is a character? They did the, the character of the neighborhood. That, is that it, was it because they felt. Mm -hmm. But is it the aesthetics of the, of the square Sort of elevation is. I mean, I'm confused about what they're saying here, and I don't really get an answer from you. I don't think. I'm not sure what they're it, 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 the, Right. The, so through you, through you, Mr. Chair, it was the care. It was the 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 style of the home, the character, the look of the home, and uh, the fact that they say that there's not a lot of three stories in the area. However, 
I can, as of right, go tomorrow and build an 11 meter three story home, as that is what it is zoned for the neighborhood. So that was, that's basically the primary um, issue that they had is that because there are, there are a lot of bungalows, there are a lot of semi detached homes, there are duplexes in the neighborhood, uh, right? You know, I'm very familiar with this neighborhood. There are duplexes there um, all around, uh, be it on there, be it Pritchard Avenue. So this is something that, you know, people are now coming into the neighborhood and reinvesting in their homes and wanting the additional space, wanting the, you know, additional units. So I can't really speak to the style and I, I don't really believe that we can speak to the style of the home. Um, the reason why we do have the main wall height is because um, we do have that sloped roof. So and that's why on one side, 947, the other side is 1084. So that's primarily their concern. Good, so I just wanted to clarify, so I understand it. The facade, the elevation of the street level, you have a parapet wall, which is what a wall is, we call these walls, they stick up beyond the roof. And behind that parapet wall, you have a hidden roof that has a slope oh, angle. Their concern was about the parapet wall then, correct? And, and yes. Yes, Their okay. concern was, well, yeah. that's fine. Okay. I, I saw it, but it's basically, I can see the elevation, I can see the parapet wall. It's five feet up, right. and it's, so mm -hmm. if that parapet wall wasn't built and had a real flat roof, they may not have raised objection, but they never said that to you, correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, any other questions, or is someone ready for uh, some uh, uh, motion with some commentary? I have a quick question. Um, the agent used number 13 Corbett as an example of a three-story uh, new build on that street. And I'm just wondering if she knows what the height is comparatively speaking to this particular home. Is it taller? Is it, I've, I've actually went down the street and looked at it. It is a three-story home. And I'm just wondering mm -hmm. in terms of height, how does it compare, do you know? It's much taller. It's, uh, it's 11, it's close to 11 meters. The, the one that we're discussing. That number 13, yes. Number 13 is much taller? That is correct. Okay. So our overall, our overall height, right? Our, because it's taken right to the parapet, but our overall height um, to the underside is the 1084. And with the parapet, it is 11. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, or is someone ready for weigh in with a motion? Mr. Taylor? Sorry. Okay. You go ahead, Mr. Taylor. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I'm strongly influenced by the fact that, uh, as Ms. Evangelista pointed out, what is permitted as of right on this property is a three story home, 11 meters in total height. Um, I'm, I'm not so much concerned about these variances for the exterior main wall height. Um, I'm more concerned with the overall height and uh, it is within the height limit. So um, my motion would be to approve this application subject to urban forestry condition three. Thank you. Yeah, but, um, can I just make a suggestion given uh whether it would be appropriate to, you know, tie it to some plan, uh, you know, just to keep the issue about the parapet wall, it's not an overall height. So then at least it avoids using uh, whatever the precedent it's particular to this particular application, just throwing that out before uh, we have someone seconding to see if that's uh... um, Danny Bellissimo would like, would like to agree with you. Um, this is a very modern home and it's a unique approach to a, a roof condition. Um, and, you know, we have to embrace modern homes these days because that's what many architects are designing. Um, so I, I would agree that maybe we should tie it to the, uh, to the plants so that they don't have the entire roof made higher overall and they keep that slope roof in the back. So if I could have, add a friendly amendment that we tie it to the plants, all the plants. I, I'm happy with that. Okay, all in favor? 
Okay, you have unanimous approval, Mrs. Evangelista. Thank you very much. And uh, we can move on to the next application, which is item number 11. We have a revised agenda page, construct two-story north side addition, second story addition above the existing dwelling and a rear yard deck. Uh, there were seven variances. There are now four, one of which has been revised. We have two letters of opposition uh, and we have, uh, yeah, from 411 Wolgar Rul and 35 Norden. So Norden's right next door and the uh, Wolgar's behind. And uh, no other conditions proposed. Speaker on this application is uh, Edouard de Degage, uh, the agent for the applicant. No other speakers. I'm uh, Edouard. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair and uh, members committee. My name is uh, Edward. I'm the agent for uh, the owners of uh, 33 Nording Avenue. Okay. Welcome, uh, members. I don't don't think we need a uh, fulsome presentation uh, from the applicant on this application. Uh, perhaps, sir, you just want to let us know if you want us to know about anything and uh, see if committee members have any questions for you. Yeah, I'm okay. Okay. If there are any questions. Okay, we do have the two letters of opposition. Members, any questions for? Uh... Yeah, I have a quick question. Uh, the two letters of opposition that were written, uh, were they written prior to the revisions that were made or, or after? I think they are prior. Sorry to, to, to say that. Yeah, they are prior because we removed that, uh, the side setback. And that, okay. as I read, you've, they you've were. Seen... You've seen those letters then, sir, and you know their yeah, concerns? Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, he does mention, I see the first letter, I'm just reading it again. Uh, he mentions the side there and said that. The other, thank you. Okay. We, we did whatever the the, exact, the, the, the planners third. asked me to do, except the FSI, they, I couldn't change that, but uh, all the other things we, we did, and the, the, the Front set back, it's uh, existing, so we can do nothing about that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, any further questions, or is some ready for a motion? Danny Berlisco has a quick question. Uh, these are major revisions. Did you have any discussion with planning? Or did planning raise any issues with you? We, we haven't seen anything from planning, but were there any issues we raised by other staff? Yeah, we discussed with planning, and uh, I agreed. No, 99% of whatever they asked me. So we changed a lot on the, you can see on the, uh, I changed two times the uh, the waiver, so. Yeah, so sir, you did that at the request of planning. You didn't just do yeah, it on yeah. your own. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks for clarifying. They requested me. Thank thanks, you. thanks for clarifying that because normally planning would give us some indication that those discussion happened, but you never mentioned it in your presentation, but that, that's good to know, thank you. Mr. Chair, can we just put this application on hold? There's a missing participant that we don't have before us, so we want to just reach out and make sure okay. uh, they still want to participate. We can go on to the next item. Okay, I only can only had one eight one person listed. Actually, it was uh, okay. I didn't have a second uh, speaker list. It's, it's written in their letter at the bottom. So we just want to make sure they have an opportunity. Okay, so our next application that is number 12, very straightforward application, 2922 Islington Avenue. It's to replace the existing canopy with a larger canopy. Uh, this is on a uh, gas station, and uh, that's the variance that the fuel station is not a permitted use. It's already there, so we're just talking about enlarging uh, a bit the, uh, the canopy. Uh, we have, that's the only variance, and we have a petition and letters and support and a cover letter from the applicants. Uh, the speaker on this application is is uh, Thomas Luke Catch, the agent, and as well, we have the owner available for questions on the line. Um, welcome. Good afternoon, Chair and members of the committee. Yes, I'm Thomas Lucas. I'm representing GT Buller Investment Group, Inc. in the Buller family. Uh, if you have any questions, please, we're here. Okay, uh, committee members, any questions? We have the uh, all the support uh, for this family uh, business to uh, enlarge their canopy. If no one has any questions, I'm prepared to make a motion. Uh, I believe this application meets the four tests and it's desirable. 
And I'm very impressed with the number of people you got to support this application. So I wholeheartedly approve. I don't believe there are any conditions. Correct. Seconded for Mrs. Uh, Al Ms. Alderson, uh, Sophia Reddick, thank you. So seconding that, all in favor? And you have unanimous approval. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, 13 has been deferred, so we'll move on to item number 14, which is 84 Queens Drive. And um, okay, this is an application. We have, first of all have a revised notice uh, uh, before us here. Um, it's to construct a new detached dwelling with a new detached garage in the rear yard and a third story rear platform. Uh, there were eight variances, there are now five, three of those have been revised, and we have. Uh, the revised plans, supporting materials, renderings, which perhaps we can get up as we hear from the agent. Uh, we have planning conditions, a condition of approval, and uh, transportation conditions. Nine, number 96 is in support, and number 61 and 82 are opposed. We do have the owner uh, of number 82 present uh, to speak on this matter. And urban forestry lastly is looking for conditions one and two. So. Let's hear from um, the agent, which is uh, uh, Rachel Kellebay. Hi, good afternoon, committee members and chair. Um, Rachel Kellebay, 297 Riverside Drive, Toronto. I'm applying as the architect for the owners. They wish to replace a very small original house with one that will fit their growing family and aging relatives. They also wish to add a basement apartment for family use or for a tenant. The proposed design retains the general footprint of the existing house and extends further to the back. We request an increase in FSI to 0 0.56, which is uh, about 63 square meters larger than allowable. This will accommodate their full family requirements, including what normal basement use is lost for an apartment. We request a variance from for the front setback. The proposed main wall is uh, 7.838 from the property line, well back from the allowable 7.7 .7 meters. So the encroachment is only for the bay window. The July 5th planning staff report notes this variance as minor and acceptable. The design is slightly higher than the allowable height by 0 0.46 meters. No, we lost the room. I'm going to have to. too long because uh, I assumed I'd be out of here by at least 5 p.m. I don't know about anybody else. No, it looks like we're back. Yep, three we're back. Sure we're back. Awesome. Um, okay, so please continue. Uh, Hi, I, I don't know at what point you lost me. Uh, had I talked about the heights? You had done your presentation. Oh, I'm not quite done. I, no, but when I interrupted you, it was immediate. Oh, yes, he didn't lose anything. Uh, so, okay, yes, so I was talking about the shingled eyebrow roof, which runs along the side walls at 7.11 meters, reduces the visual impact and is a neighborhood feature. Full height side walls are typical of many nearby houses, and I have some photographs that maybe you could pull up. I, I sent photographs as part of the package. The, the final one of those photographs is the beautiful shingled house at 86. And we have a letter from them in support as well. The roof line also conceals a third floor rear platform. The roof line blocks the overview to both sides. We request an increase in its area to 10 meters. Sorry, can staff please get, oh, there we go. 
get the pictures up with the applicant's presentation, the renderings and the pitch photos. I believe they have so, some writing to indicate what houses they are. Sorry, hi Rachel, I think um, we lost yeah. about 30 seconds of your, of your audio. So if you can just rewind your presentation, I will pause the clock. But I think you. okay. you begun talking about the shingled roof, I believe, when we lost connection. So if you can uh, resume from there, that would be great. Okay. Um, I hope I'm not boring you for the third time here. <laughs> I'll start. However, as the planning staff um, report notes, the shingled eyebrow edge of the roof eave, which runs along the sidewalls at 7.11 meters height, reduces the visual impact and is a neighborhood feature. Full height sidewalls are typical of many neighborhood houses. And I've got photographs of, of many neighborhood houses attached uh, with the full height sidewalls. If you can just run through them, thank you. Full height sidewalls. And the final one is our lovely neighbor next door. We have a letter of, of support from them, but this is the one that we face that we've kind of tried to mimic. Hmm. Okay. The roof line also conceals a third floor rear platform blocking the overview to the sides. We request an increase in its area to 10.0 meters. After speaking with planning and the neighbor at number 82, we had removed our request for the west driveway canopy encroachment. So we will conform to the bylaw on this item. And I'm not sure, do you still have a variance in there for the paved width, the driveway width? Um, if, if no, that was deleted. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, any questions for uh, Ms. Calabay before we hear from the neighbor at 82? Okay, uh, so Kenneth Sisson uh, is uh, the neighbor next door, and we'll hear from him on whether uh, uh, he concerns the city's satisfied or partially satisfied with respect to the changes that have been made. And I believe he's going to be appearing by video. Okay. Is Kenneth there? I am there. Okay. I think you have to start your video. Now, how do I do that? I think there should be a button, start video, stop video, you chair. No, I don't see that. Okay, well, anyway. Okay, so I'll talk. Yes. <laughs> uh, my name is Ken Sisson. I live at 82 Queens Drive. I'm the next door neighbor to the applicant. I'm at, 80, as I say, 82 Queens Drive. I've been in this house for 41 years. I, uh, I, I'm quite appreciative of the fact that the applicant has made an effort to retain the style of the neighborhood, which is eclectic, but he's done a very nice job on that. Thank you, Rachel. My issue has to do with the, uh, with the uh, effectively what is a carport on the, on the west side, and I think I heard Rachel say they were going to do away with that. Thank you. My second concern was the fact that the driveway runs virtually the full length of the lot, the full depth of the lot. It's quite wide and I'm concerned that there is no place for the runoff except onto my property. Now, in the main part, that's not an issue because I have, I'll call it soft landscaping, gardens and, and uh, lawn in the back area and the front area. My concern is around the area between the two houses. The property line is 32 inches from the east side of my house. And it's an old house. And I'm concerned that runoff from the driveway, the poured concrete driveway, will in fact uh, potentially impact my foundation. I think I talked to the applicant about it and uh, I suggested there has to be an engineer, engineering solution for this. For example, an uh, uh, integral molded curb in the, uh, in the uh, concrete driveway in the area I'm concerned about, that is along my foundation, uh, to guide the runoff from the, the uh, driveway into the street where it would go into the storm sewer. 
those are the two issues I had. As I said, I'm generally uh, quite agreeable to the design. Uh, it meets the family's need and the house that is there is just too small for anybody but one couple. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, any questions for uh, Mr. Sasson before uh, we go back to get the rebuttal from uh, Rachel? Okay, um, Rachel, if you could please uh, respond and um, please go ahead. Thank you. We're proposing keeping the driveway where it is right now. And um, the, if you see on the survey, the, the uh, ground level along um, uh, the house next door is actually raised six or eight inches. The grades show on the survey. So it does drain toward our property away from um, his, his foundation. You can see along the, the property line, their elevation notes there. So there should not be any additional water coming onto his property from this area. Okay, thank you. Um, members, any uh, further follow-up questions or is someone ready to weigh in with the motion on this matter? And we do have a staff condition, just they want to cons construct a substantial importance to the site plan and elevation drawings as it relates to front yard setback and design of the side main walls. Uh, Danny Bidesma would like to weigh in with a motion if there are no further questions. Yes. Sorry, there's also transportation conditions. Yes. Transportation, there's three, planning, transportation, and forestry are the three conditions. Right. Um, I, I'm really impressed with this design. I, I haven't seen this hand sketch drawing for a long time. And I think that the eyebrow roof guide is, uh, uh, is a very great uh, feature. And so I find the variance of very minor nature and the characteristics of a house will fit in very well with the neighborhood. So I'd like to move for approval of the variances, uh, one, two, three, four, and five, and on the condition by uh, set out by forestry, transportation services, and planning. Hey, thank you, Mr. Bellissimo. I'm happy to second that with also the comment that it is a fabulous design. So thank you, Rachel. Okay, all in favor? Looks like you have unanimous approval. Uh, thank you, uh, Rachel, uh, and thank you to Kenneth. And um, we can move on to the next application. Are we ready to go back to the one we had to put on pause, Madam Secretary Treasurer? Not yet, I'll let you know. Okay. Sorry, through you, Mr. Chair, before we continue, I just wanna make a quick note to uh, speakers that might be on the line for the 1 p.m. session due to a significant technological delay. Um, we're still on the morning session. Yeah, we're on, we're about to start on item 15 out of uh, and we go up to number 20 uh, for the morning session. So item number 15 is 20 Lady Bank Road. It's an application to uh, legalize and maintain. Um, we had a previous approvals uh, on this property back. And uh, yes, so uh, previous application approved variance related to floor space index, side yard setback, building length and depth and soft height. We now have uh, seven variances as enumerated. We have four letters of opposition. In the additional materials, we have a letter from number 22 uh, concerned with potential flooding and other concerns. Sir, um, through you, Mr. The issue appears to be that the basement was included, and uh, that's why I think we're back. We'll hear from the agent. Yes, sir. Sorry, uh, just a quick note. Um, the resident at 22 initially registered to speak, but they advised that due to a scheduling conflict, they won't be able to attend the meeting, but they did advise that their comments submitted on file uh, do stand. Right, so those are perhaps we can, uh, after we hear from the applicant, perhaps we can just put that letter the, up on the board. Yeah, the, the, the letter is currently displayed. Oh, it was. There. Okay, yeah, so perhaps, uh, and perhaps the applicant, uh, David, I, Eagleman can um, can then uh, refer to that in his presentation. He, he will have read the letter. Welcome, uh, Mr. Eagleman. Welcome Good afternoon, back. Mr. Chair and committee members. Um, I, I presume the committee would like a presentation considering we have opposition and it is a bit of a convoluted file. Okay, uh, for sure. Please go ahead. 
Okay, so uh, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, before getting into the variances, I would like to note that we have consulted with community planning staff regarding this application, and as indicated within their report, they have no concerns or objections. And additionally, I have reviewed the urban forestry memorandum, and I am acceptable to the recommended forestry condition. Right. So having said that, yes, we have the, I didn't go through my introduction of what we had. We did have the, the court previous decision and the orders, two orders to comply. And we do have the planning report for information, which uh, indicates, as you just stated, that they have no problem and it's due to the calculation inclusion of the, uh, the height of the first floor being uh, 1.63 meters uh, above established grade. And then without it, the coverage would be 33%. So uh, I don't know if members need a, Fulsome presentation on this. Uh, I don't know if the letters of objection were, you know, thinking something untoward was happening here, but uh, we do perhaps just address Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, the next door neighbor 22's letter, uh, which is in our additional materials, uh, sort of a rebuttal to that as, as your presentation. Yes, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, before I, I address the, the. And some background. Uh, yeah, I just want to provide some background and context. Sure. Um, sure. I won't get into the details of the variances, but um, so this proposal, as you know, because of the previous decision from 2020 on file, went through a, a committee of adjustment application, was approved, and a, a building permit was issued for that new dwelling. And I will note that both the adjacent neighbors were supportive of that previous approval. Um, uh, subsequently, when the owner began construction, uh, he quickly ran into groundwater issues, which has resulted in the, ap uh, the application that I am presenting today. And in order to address those groundwater issues, um, the proposed dwelling was basically raised slightly and construction proceeded uh, as the owner did not intend on deviating from the previous approval and the permit drawings uh, in a manner that would trigger a new process. Um, however, uh, it was quickly brought to his attention that the the revisions that he proceeded with did trigger a new process, and he subsequently went through the process as required. Um, so the proposal, the proposed dwelling that is subject to this application has essentially already been approved, and all of the variances being requested through this application are a direct result of the dwelling being slightly higher than what was approved. Um, and in, in rebuttal to the, the objection letters from the neighbors, I will just note that, you know, pretty much all the neighbors tend to focus on matters that aren't within the purview of the committee and aren't really related to the variances. So uh, I'll just note again that the, the proposed dwelling is has basically already been approved. The design is not changing in any manner uh, other than some slight modifications like the rear porch Although it is exactly the same size, it has been moved to the north side, which actually has uh, a larger setback, whereas it was previously on the uh, south side. And um, the the application represents good planning. It meets the four tests under Section 451, and uh, I believe this application should be approved. And the, the last note I'll make, Mr. Chair, is that um, at the front of the dwelling, the well, across the entire dwelling, the established grade is lower than the actual grade. So um, the variances will actually be perceived to be less than what the actual number is um, because of that. Okay, thank you. Uh, members, any questions uh, for Mr. Eagleman? Or uh, somebody? Danny, Danny Bellissimo has a, a few questions for clarification. You said they slightly raised the first floor to avoid the groundwater. What, what was that amount? Uh, it is three, Mr. Chair. The the mount was approximately forty centimeters. Forty, which is forty centimeters, is uh, like two, feet. It's eight, like eight, eighteen inches, or in yeah, inches? it's approximately fifteen, eighteen inches. In eighteen inches, okay, and that's because of a technical difficulty. Okay, and the other question was, when you went through zoning the first time, was the established grade uh, considered at that point, or was that something discovered? In the second go, go around. So uh, grades are established by established grades these days, right? instead of just average grades. 
uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I, I believe, Member Blismo, you're asking if uh, the, the previous application was in 2020. So yes. I believe the established grade was considered during the previous application. The only reason the house was raised was because of those groundwater issues that were encountered. Because yeah, the reason I'm asking that question, sometimes applicants forget to calculate established grade and do average grade. And that's an error, a technical error as well, but usually it's caught by zoning. Fine, you've answered my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, any further questions or is someone ready for a motion? Mr. Mr. Chair, I have a question. I noticed in the February 2020 application, there wasn't a coverage variance, and yet there is this time variance one. I'm just wondering why that is, if, it, if it's this is basically just a matter of raising the height of the building. Yes, through you, Mr. Chair, um, Member Taylor, the reason there is now a coverage variance is because um, as a result of the dwelling being raised, the rear uh, ground floor patio is now included in the coverage. Um, I believe it has something to do with it not being a permitted encroachment anymore because of the height of it relative to the, the ground below it. Um, so it is now included in the coverage, but the dwelling itself, excluding the patio, is compliant with coverage at 31%. Okay, thank you. That makes sense. Okay. Okay, is someone ready to weigh in or are there further questions forthcoming? Okay, I think we're ready for motion. Mr. Taylor? No way. And uh, Mr. Chair, I, I think in essence, what we've got here is basically what this committee approved uh, less than two and a half years ago. Um, so uh, I think the merits of it uh, still apply. Um, and I move approval subject to urban forestry condition number one. Thank you. Second. Second. Yeah. Okay, all in favor, you have unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Egoin. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee. Hopefully you guys get off at five o'clock. Okay, um, item number 16 is 26 Lap Street. Uh, it's a one store, uh, sorry, a two story rear addition and a new detached garage in the rear yard. There are uh, six variances. We have six letters of support, one per variance, and we have nothing whatsoever other than the materials filed no comments from neighbors uh, other than the support letters and no nothing from city staff. The speaker on this is Joe Dome. Welcome, Mr. Dome. Um, yes, hi, my name is Joe Dome, uh, 133 Torresdale Avenue, agent for the applicant. Okay, Urban Forestry is looking for uh, condition number three. Your client is okay with that, I assume? That's right. Okay, uh, let's see if the committee members have any questions for you or if uh, they're ready for a motion, unless there's anything you'd like to advise us of. Prior to that, we don't need a presentation on this. Very straightforward. Um, but I, I would like to um, speak to a point by uh, planning. Um, uh, there was some correspondence uh, with uh, planning um, okay. and a green roof over the rear detached garage was proposed along with uh, permeable pavers on the small walkway leading to the garage. Um, and those satisfied planning concerns. Um, the revised drawings were submitted, I believe on uh, June 27th, but uh, I don't see it on file right now, but uh, yeah, those were the revisions that were made um, in accordance with uh, planning comments. Okay, uh, I don't see anything on file from planning on this application. Staff, do we have anything? Hello? I don't see them. Yeah, I, we don't, I wanna see anything about from planning on this application, Joe. Uh, in any event, uh, any questions for Mr. Dome or someone ready to weigh in with a motion? I'm ready to weigh in unless somebody has any questions. Um, happy to hear about the green initiatives that you have agreed to do and think that's a wonderful thing to be doing. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward application. Uh, so I move for approval. I believe it meets the four tests. Move for approval subject to urban forestry condition number three, I believe. Yeah. Okay, second for Ms. Alderson's motion. Mr. Taylor, thank you. All in favor, you have unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Dome. Thank you very much. Okay, item 17 has been deferred. So on to number 18, which is 52 Broad Oaks Road. Uh, yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's an application. Uh, just bear with me for a second. For one story, West Side Edition, a new deck, two variances, nothing before us uh, that I can see here other than the material submitted. And the speaker is uh, uh, Shaoi. Luca, no, sorry, Shaoi Chang. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Ch yeah, good afternoon, Mr. Chair and the committee. And my name is Shari Chen, uh, agent for the owner of 52 Broadbox Drive. So this project is to propose an unheated sunroom attached to the existing house from the real world. So the existing house setback from the east side is one point. Yeah, sir, sir, I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, you know, interrupt your pre presentation, but I don't believe we need a presentation. We have nothing, no concerns from neighbors or any city departments, and we're way behind schedule. So with your permission, if I could just see if committee members have any questions for you on this, I don't think we need you to walk us through the variances, which are very straightforward, basically one, the west side and east side lot lines. East, east side, yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, members, any questions for Mr. Chang or is someone ready for a motion? I'm I'm happy to make a motion if no one has any questions. I believe this application meets the four tests. It's very straightforward and move for approval of the two variances with no conditions. Thank you, Ms. Alderson. Second there for that. Any minutes more? Thank you. All in favor? Okay, Mr. Chang, you have unanimous approval of your application. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Item number 19, we have a revised, uh, you know, uh, agenda page for a notice uh, pursuant to a waiver. It's to construct a two-story front addition and a second-story addition above the existing dwelling with two variances. One of them has been uh, altered, the front and loft line setback. Uh, we have revisions and the, we have no comment from, uh, no objection from TRCA, no conditions from ravines. And uh, that's all we have. One small, uh, and there's a small uh, presentation. There's a presentation materials and uh, support from number 16 next door in our additional materials. And the speaker on this is Katrina Sokacha, Sochaka, and uh, this, their neighbor from 12 next door. Sorry. Uh, what's the address here? Is it 18 or 10? Okay, it's 18. The neighbor, sorry, the neighbor here is from 12. Okay. Uh, so let's hear from the speaker, uh, the agent for the applicant, Katrina Sochaka. Uh, Welcome. Yes, hello, hello, uh, Mr. Chair. And, uh, yes, ma'am, you have an extra device open. So please turn one of them off. We're getting a, a vibration and you're very coming in very low. I'm sorry. Is it any better? Please continue. I'd let you know. And here. We have two variances. Uh, one is really minor. Uh, we're exceeding very, very low um, uh, floor space index. And the other one, the second one, is the um, uh, front yard setback. Okay. I, would like to, I would like to point out that the, uh, that the situation is very unique because our, the building, the building of my clients, faces uh, 18 Hill Avon faces uh, main branch of Hill Avon Drive. But the, I would call it side yard, is declared the front yard. And um, we are exceeding uh, the, actually we cut short into the um, this um, yard. Instead of, instead of uh, our addition, uh, there is uh, either on the top uh, 6.7 meter and uh, on the north, on the south encroaches, uh, it's eight, sorry, um, someone, someone else was going to speak, Kristen uh, Miller was going to present that for, for us. For, for okay, own. anyway, you're doing, it's very straightforward, so, uh... I see based on the location map that it's an odd position that your backyard faces the neighbor's side yard. Uh, so we do have a neighbor on the line. Let's hear from the neighbor, see if they, what their concerns are at number 12, and you can respond to that. 
Okay. And does anyone have any questions for the applicant before we do that? Uh, Danny Bernice has a quick question. Um, and looking at the drawing, is the hatched area the addition? I'm not sure where the additions are. I don't see the word. Maybe I'm missing it. Can you explain where the additions are? Um, yes. Well, I don't know if you're looking at the same because we forwarded a short presentation. And yes, the hatched yeah, area. Get that on the screen. Hatched area includes the addition. We, uh, we uh, reduced the extent of the addition from six feet to yes from six feet to five feet and uh, you know the bottom corner is only six foot uh, i'm so sorry six meters sorry to interrupt you not after numbers or is the garage the, i'm confused what the addition is it your drawings don't really tell me where the addition is is it the hatched area you have a hatched area what, uh, what i'm seeing on the screen uh, the Building including addition is uh, hatched, but the the uh, garage and the main uh, entrance is from the from the south. From the you know the garage is not uh, changed. You know the addition comes to the uh, east side. But what is the addition? There's no there's no labeling that says addition anywhere here that I could see. Uh, well, uh, so maybe on the next drawings I have. I have no ability to. But is it the kitchen, the dining room, the? I don't know what the addition is. It's okay. Seth, Seth there was an addition. Is it, is it, is it, what are you possible? showing now? We should be showing the additional materials. There was a package, a presentation that the the agent is referring to. If we is could have that. Is it possible by there any chance uh, to add Kristen yeah. Miller because she's online? Oh, that's yeah. that's that's what I was talking about. Is it possible to add her to this presentation, please? Uh, it's one speaker. Sorry, you're already three minutes. I can see into your presentation. Uh, please continue. And uh, perhaps these drawings clarify as they get scrolled by. This was your presentation. Yes. Uh, materials. Yes. So, so, so once, once, once again, uh, I'm trying to say that this is really a uh, very special situation because the the Really, the front of the building is at, uh, it's on the south, on the main branch of uh, Hill Avon. That, there we go. That shows better. And uh, Hill Avon bunches out. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the side yard is declared yes. uh, the front yard, and the, uh, the front uh, setback uh, is derived from the abutting building. Can Mr. Melissa, do you have any further questions, or can we move on and hear from? No, oh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm okay. I I just still can't figure out what the additions are, but I'll just look at the variances as they're located as they're presented to us. But it's not. Yes. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Danny, you. Danny, if you look at the floor plans, you can see it's the front on the shorter side of the house. So there in the basement, you see it's the unexcavated. Well, the addition, oh, the I can addition. See, yeah, so it's basically living room, dining room, the broken line is what's been removed and they push that wall forward. Okay. Normally you just see the word addition there, but not, I, I see it now. Thank you. Thanks, Barb. So the addition is only on the east side that normally would be treated as a side yard. Okay, thank you. Uh, right. Let's hear from uh, Matthew Zimbicki uh, next door or at number 12. And I believe he's going to be appearing by video. Actually, the agent was, Katrina was also supposed to be applying, uh, be here by video, but it didn't happen. Uh, again, this is all new, so we'll have to work out some kinks. Oh, yeah, I, I don't need to be on video. I, I just was, uh, you know, my, my initial concern was that, uh, you know, there, I don't think there would be room in the front of the house for, you know, that addition, but on the side, I guess there's some uh, more room. So, uh, yeah, I don't have uh, concerns about it. I just wanted to see what the process was. So, okay, I hope you've enjoyed. And didn't uh, we don't normally have a big delay like that? Yeah. Okay, and we do have the neighbor at number sixteen right next door in support. So, uh, were there any questions for Matthew? 
and, and if not, um, I assume Matthew, you're okay. You have said what you'd have, what you've had to say. And so I'm ready if someone wants to weigh in with a motion. Danny Bellissimo now understands the drawings more clearly and I find it's a very modest addition to the house's change in the character, the living room and dining room. And I can understand the issues that the presenter has made regarding the fact that the side yards and front yard and all that's hard when you've got a corner lot and this in essence is a corner lot. So I'd like to move approval of the variances. I don't believe there are any conditions. Seconded for Mr. Blipsmo's motion. Ms. Reddick, thank you. All in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you, uh, Katrina. Thank you, Matthew. Um, thank you. We can move thank on you, to man. our last application of the morning, uh, number 26 Tayro Road. It's an application to construct a new second story addition above the existing dwelling and a new attached garage. Uh, there are two variances, and planning has a condition of approval constructing as illustrated with respect to the front yard setback, three letters of support, one letter of opposition from number 18. And that's all we have. The speaker on this application is Mark Carozo, uh, the agent for the applicant. Mark Carozo. Carozo, sorry. Did we have him in a sound check? It shows he did not pre-register. Uh, Mark, you're unmuted. Hello. Sorry, Mark. It you seem to be unmuted on on our end. If you can um, exit the call and rejoin, maybe that alleviate, that will alleviate, sorry, some of the connection issues that, that you might be having, um, but we cannot hear you. Anyway, I just was gonna see if, uh, you know, respond to the objection letter if he wished and uh, to see if he's okay with the planning condition of tying it to the front yard setback, which usually people are. Uh, sorry, Mark. Mr. Chair. Um, so Mark logged off and then hopefully he'll rejoin. Okay. Okay, yeah, the letter from the neighbor in the opposition as opposed to the two in support from number 18 uh, is that uh, in short, we're completely against any changes to the said front yard setback allowance in the street, as this would change our well-liked spacious street dynamics in a negative way. Um, and there were three letters of support. So perhaps Mark is gonna be able to join us. Otherwise, uh, perhaps, and also we're waiting to hear back on number 11. We haven't, uh, we were, halted in the middle of that presentation for some mystery uh, person on the line or whatever who didn't appear on our participation list, uh, whether we're ready to go back to that and make a motion on that one. Mark is here if you can try speaking. Perhaps you can try calling in because we can't hear you. Uh, I'm questioning whether we... Hello? If he's not there, I don't know, maybe we don't need him. If uh, any of the members, uh, there's a simple planning condition and uh, a against any change whatsoever letter from a neighbor several doors away. So I don't know if the... Uh, members feel that they were able to vote uh, without hearing from uh, the agent on this application. So we can then discuss what we're doing about a lunch break, whether it's gonna be 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or uh, whatever, or an hour. Sorry, Mr. Chair, we still have item number 11 as well. Yeah, I did mention that. Yeah. Whether we were ready to go back to that because we were waiting some mystery so. uh, party to appear on that. 
Okay, can we vote on number 20 then? I don't think we need the applicant unless uh, anyone uh, feels uh, contrary to that. And I assume it's not gonna be a refusal. Mr. Chair, I'd like to table a motion. Uh, I find the variance is very straightforward, minor in nature, meeting the other tests under the Planning Act. And I move approval subject to the Community Planning Department condition. Okay, thank you. I'm seconded for Mr. Taylor's motion. Okay, everyone's hand go up at once. Ms. Ruddick, thank you. Uh, all in favor? Okay, unanimous approval. Uh, so Mark Carosa's application has been approved in absentia. Uh, now, I guess, are we ready to go back, Annalise, at number 11? Yeah. Through you, Mr. Chair, with respect to item 11, we did, um, we did try and attempt to get a hold of the, the neighbor whose, whose address escapes me now. Um, they did write in. It's the neighbor from... Yes. 35 next door or from, from yeah from 30 old, 35 next door yep they did they did write in a letter um i tried twice yes. to get a hold of them after and it went to voicemail okay uh, i just point out on the partition participant intake list you sent me this morning there was no person on the list other than the agent on that application for whatever that's worth um i believe the agent had completed their application their presentation on that one I didn't do one, but uh, yeah, oh. if you want me, I can do it. <laughs> I just. Uh, Members, would you like uh, Mr. Bagage to uh, present an application presentation on this? There were seven variances, there are now four, and one of those has been revised. Uh, Other than that, we didn't have yes. anything on file. Sorry? Uh, I don't need a full time full presentation, but maybe an explanation to why the variances are being dropped and how that came about. I've been asked by the, by the planning and uh, I spoke with uh, the owner, so we dropped those. They were reasonable. Uh, I advised since the beginning uh, the owner that they were not uh, the right thing to do, but uh, he insisted. So we went back and were bidding uh, over the existing walls. So we're not, not going side because we propose to go two feet on the side. Now we're going uh, over the existing walls. Hello? Yep. Any questions, members? Or some right have, have that explanation, uh, Danny, as to what the why those uh, revisions were made? And, yep. While we made those revisions, we went back uh, lower than uh, the allowed uh, lot of uh, coverage, lower than 33%. So we remain with uh, uh, like uh, the back, it's 1.35 because it's uh, the, the slope is negative on the back of on the rear of the house. So not was an irritation to have a, a rear above two uh, four feet, but because of the slope, it's negative. So we ended up like that. The front, it's, uh, it's already there, so we're not doing any addition on the front, but uh, we're 775 existing. Exactly. Uh, okay, um, and, Dan, uh, did you have the answer to your question? Yes, he clarified uh, how the process for reducing those variances. Thank okay. you. Any uh, further questions, uh, members, or some ready for a motion? Mr. Taylor. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm satisfied the variance is set out in the revised uh, application numbers two as revised three, five, and seven. We meet the four tests under the Planning Act and I move approval without conditions. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. We have a seconder for Mr. Taylor's motion. Ms. Alderson, thank you. All in favor? Uh, unanimous approval. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, and uh, glad we were able to get this application done. With that now thank you, so much. thank you. That now concludes the morning session. Uh, Madam Secretary Treasurer, what are we doing about a lunch break today? We do need a minimum of an hour for staff because they, they're they on site and they also have to do sound check before okay. they Okay, so we will return then at uh, 2.50 p.m., right? 
Thank you. See everyone then. Thank you. 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 Thank you.